and here we go. So hi everyone. I hope that uh, you're all doing very well. Uh, it's, a, it's a special edition as it's a reduced sized edition. <laughs> it's a holiday edition, I don't know to say, but it's the first time after the um, and confinement that we are making this uh, this call and uh, and uh, so it's a uh, big changes we we've, we've actually enjoyed on the Dribble you know team side this opportunity to take a few days off uh, and you know go to the countryside just to recover. I hope that you are uh, able to do uh, to do so on your side too. Um, it's been a very very intense three months uh, marathon. Um, so. Uh, we are going to have um, a smaller version of this global community call as uh, both Mark and Leo are, are not available uh, because if they, they, could not, they won't be at the call and sharing uh, the usual community and platform updates. Um, so um, in terms of general updates from the program, um, so we, we had the, the round three of applications closed on Monday and we have um, 12 beautiful projects that applied and uh, right now everybody is invited to go and 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 review you know help reviewing uh, those pro those projects so that we have uh, um, like we did for the two past rounds um, an overview uh, of the the quality of those projects in terms of uh, impact and feasibility um, and uh, and yeah so it's 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 it's, it's very exciting um, and uh, so we'll be probably closing the reviewing phase uh, this Sunday. Uh, so uh, it, it will depend on how much we got reviews. So as as much as you know, uh, as much as we get enough reviews for having at least three or four reviews per projects, uh, that would be enough so that we can close it basically. So um, so if you want to have the results as the soonest, um, please go and join the the reviewing. Uh, it just it doesn't take actually much time. Um, so that, that would be fantastic. The, um, the other uh, news is that we're uh, welcoming a new Juggle team member. Uh, uh, it's uh, Joe Havman, uh, who is joining us to help us on the development of uh, uh, a, a program um, dedicated to Africa uh, for, uh, for Juggle. And in fact, the first phase of this program is going to be dedicated to, uh, to, uh, to COVID-19. Uh, I don't know if Joe, could you, uh, Introduce yourself uh, in you know very, very fast. Uh, sure. Hi everyone. I'm super glad to be here. Thanks, thanks, um, Toma, for inviting me to the team um, and the community. Uh, obviously, I've been following Jago since um, yeah, since basically Toma introduced it at Africa Arch back in I think the first time in 2018. Oh, for sure. So last year I was more mature and ready to launch. Um, in, when was it? May 2019. Um, <clears throat> I I come like well, basically I'm also a researcher. I have a background in molecular biology and evolution and development of animals. Um, what else? Um, I'm a co-founder of Africa Archive, which is an Africa Osh baby, so to say. So Africa Archive is a preprint repository for Africa. Um, so it's region specific, not discipline specific. You're probably all familiar with Meta Archive and Bio Archive um, by now in the coronavirus context. Um, and yeah, so the way I hope I'll be able to contribute to Joggle is to um, also bring some, or if not all, of the initiatives that we started with Africa Archive in context of the corona pandemic into Juggle projects. It's just been so busy with like everyday tasks, but I've opened an account and long ago and I, I just need to do the, yeah, the technical work and, and setting up the projects on, on Juggle. Um, just to share with you, one um, initiative that we started in the very beginning of the pandemic when the virus spread across, like from Asia across Europe and then was hitting Africa and we can clear that Africa will also be affected. Um, <coughs> we initiated a global mapping of the COVID-19 responses. And I know that there's um, similar initiatives there by several you know, stakeholders, but as 
I haven't seen any that's looking so much at community driven initiatives. So you can look at the Google, yeah, the Google Doc in in the chat and we, like what I also want to do is to make sure that whatever is being published in blogs or on databases of thought also finds its way into the scholarly um, into scholarly repositories. And yeah, when Africa is concerned, of course, would, like for in the best case scenario, we um, submitted it to Africa Archive, but we can also use other scholarly repositories that are like not region specific. Um, depending on which community or which project it makes most sense. Um, so, so my core, um, my core vision and mission for my contributions to Juggle is like interoperability between databases and and communities. Um, yeah, bringing communities together and especially for Africa, because I've been working on the continent for the past ten years and then academia. Yeah, also since then, basically. Um, yeah, just to make sure that we talk um, to all stakeholders on the continent as we engage with COVID-19 or open COVID-19, but also more, like, beyond that. Hopefully this will not be the leading topic for the next decade. But yeah, I don't know if that's, I hope this became clear. Feel free to ask questions. Um, there's other initiatives that I'm also happy to share, but yeah, I, I think I leave it on this for now and and set up the projects on Juggle and then next in the next call I can kind of share the links to the actual Juggle projects for engagement. Is that awesome. good? Thank you, Joe. Um, so the ne the next uh, call for uh, Open COVID nineteen Africa is next um, Tuesday at three p.m. Paris time. Uh, so if you're interested to join, you're welcome. Um, and yeah, so it's uh, the, the, the the one one thing that is really really important, as uh, Joe said, is to be able to really connect uh, different uh, existing communities, and uh, and so um, the the one existing in Africa are, are ones that we have not yet like uh, we we don't see very much yet, you know, on, on the goal. So it's very important to be able to identify them, contact them, and uh, basically creating links between what you're doing and what they're doing too. Uh, so that's going to be uh, very interesting for the for the new future. Um, all right. Um, so the I will go directly to uh, to the next phase of this of this call, uh, asking for Alex and Camille about uh, general updates from the working groups. Um, who would like to start? Uh, Alex, maybe or Camille. Sure. I'm happy to provide a quick update. I don't have slides today, so I'll just share my video. Um, so I wanted to share that one of the, the biggest changes over the last week has been that we've implemented user groups um, within Slack. So we have over 30 different user groups that are um, that essentially match with individuals expertise and skills um, based on uh, what was shared in the initial survey that folks fill out as they join the community. So um, as teams are needing new team members or need to consult with specific experts, you can use the, the user groups feature. So in Slack, you would just go on people on the top left and click on the users um, tab and you can scroll through all of the different user groups. Uh, currently, you need to be an administrator to create a new user group, but anyone can join um, or leave a user group. So if you've been added into a user group uh, that you don't feel you are a good fit for, you can feel free to remove yourself from it. Um, and similarly, if you want to join uh, an existing user group, you can feel free to do that as well. Um, yes, so that's been really great. Um, there's already been a few success stories from that. So folks that have been posting in the looking for skills channel, for example, and then uh, one of the guides, uh, one of the community guides like myself will then comment and tag a specific user group based on that person's uh, project need. And then from there, uh, the person can um, connect with folks in that user group and then bring them on board and start collaborating. So um, it's proven to be quite successful within the Slack workspace, um, but it's by no means meant to replace what Juggle is built for, um, which is making those links and, and matching projects with needs as well. So that's been um, 
a big update on our end. And then another new uh, process that we piloted last week that was quite successful was a onboarding welcome call. So if there's anyone on this call today that's looking for a bit more support in getting started within the community, um, we're going to have another call tomorrow at the same time. So it's at uh, 9 p.m. UTC, uh, 7 p.m. CET. Um, so we'll be hosting those on Thursdays bi-weekly or kind of based on the need. If there was a, 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 a lots of new people within a few days, we can host one. It's kind of uh, meant to be quite responsive based on the community's need. Um, but the first one that was hosted last week was quite useful um, for the folks who joined and they were able to know exactly where to go to get started and um, it was also really nice to, to share individuals goals in joining the community. So those were the two uh, big updates on my end. I'm happy to Thank answer. You, Thanks. Thank you very much Alex. Um, in terms of, um, Camille, do you want to share any updates from your side? Um, Whoops. I actually, actually, I, I was part of the, of the people who took some uh, days of rest. So yes. um, not, <laughs> there is not, <laughs> not much on my side. But, okay, um, no worries. Yeah, I'm happy to give the mic and be listening for this time. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kemi. Um, so uh, uh, for communications, uh, so Hans is not there, um, but uh, you know, you have you have the link if you want to 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 share some stories. Uh, we're you know basically working on creating uh, and um, like a task force really that that can that can help share your stories and uh, um, on social medias. Um, so we're still in the process of uh, so recruiting um, a person who could join the team part time, full time. You know, on on actually doing this work uh, within Jogo uh, for this program. Um, and um, so, if if you are uh, if you're interested, don't hesitate to uh, to uh, to apply and talk to us. Um, we'd be very happy actually to engage discussion, uh, especially first with member of this community. Um, actually, um, Pauline, uh, do you want to provide some updates uh, regarding student engagement? Oh um, yeah. So I guess a couple things. One, we are still really trying to. Uh, we got in contact with a couple two, two schools. Most of them are asking us to basically, they have a site and we can post opportunities on their site. One option is, I think we do have something we can frame as an internship to put on a site for Bellevue College. Another one is um, potentially putting it on this um, MIT I, uh, in initiative um, dashboard uh, another thing that's still underway because we're not sure how official we want to make it through Jogo is something we're doing with Gmod which is kind of providing a chance to make a sort of interactive lab proposal with Gmod's platform and I guess the last thing we're working on is a poster hopefully to be done by tomorrow's meeting to send out to um, student organizations and um, get the word going and s start um, preparing for summer. Uh, one last thing to note is that um, I think some students that we've had in here should be coming back, so I'm going to be contacting them as well. So I guess these next couple of weeks are really just going to be a push to get the word out and to get some students recruited. And there is other people I'm talking with at the moment, but I don't want to say anything for sure on the call to see if we can work in something in the summer or fall. Mm. Also, don't forget tomorrow, um, I believe I said 7 p.m. CAT or um, 1 p.m. EST, or if you're in my time zone, 10 a.m., we had, do have a student engagement meeting where hopefully we will launch that poster. <laughs> awesome. Um, in, in fact, um, if you yourself as project leaders looking for an intern, don't hesitate actually to, to, to share um, like a specific demand. Uh, you know, we're getting, getting in, in contact with more and more, as Pauline said, uh, schools uh, in the US and France also, we have specific demands sometimes from universities and schools saying, okay, are you looking for interns? Um, and so uh, on the Google side, we have a limited demand, uh, but however, um maybe you have actually a need for an intern so don't hesitate actually to share it with us um 
uh, one thing I think I forgot uh, from the general updates, and I talked about it last week, uh, is the fact that we're joining hands with, uh, with iGEM. And so uh, starting in a few days, uh, uh, iGEM will be present on Drupal as a, as a whole program too. Uh, and so we'll, we'll be seeing uh, a lot of iGEM projects and iGEM teams joining. Um, it's going to be very exciting for anyone interested in synthetic biology and how biotech can, can be used for certain problems um, uh, in the world. And so um, uh, there will be encouragements also for creating links and collaborations between you know, uh, your projects and, and, and iGEM teams. Um, you know, it's, uh, a lot of people here are already experienced with iGEMs. Um, you know, I'm thinking of uh, Ellen, you know, uh, and uh, so um, that would be a, um, the whole reflection about how we can actually also um, make iGEM, uh, you know, compatible uh, with this whole open culture, uh, one more open collaboration. Uh, so I think it's going to, to be very interesting. In fact, uh, there is in the thinking about how can we maybe create um, a different kind of league even, you know, for iGEM where the idea is uh, where the current iGEM is kind of like an oil up in games, uh, you know, it's very, very high end, kind of expensive to participate where how can we actually have something more grassroots where uh, it's much more easy uh, to, for, for people to participate and still be in this uh, kind of context. So we, um, we're, we're, we'll be entering this kind of reflection also and how we could actually facilitate that. Um, can I, can right. I say something, Tomas? Absolutely. Because I'm actually advising a high school iGEM team right now. I'm not participating in iGEM this year, but um, I got sort of roped in. And I was trying to explain to them that Jogo was available. Uh, I haven't seen anything like advertising us from iGEM. And I, I wasn't sure, like, how we get teams to know what Jogal has and how to use it. Because mm. the thing that I thought of was um, the collaboration aspect. Um, you could show collaboration through um, a project on Jogal and that the team members were from both iGEM teams or something like that. Um, but if we want it to get used in a big way and in, in <laughs> And in a way, this is our moment, right? This is this is when iGEM teams have to look for alternate ways to to get medals, um, which is mainly what the teams are concerned with, unfortunately. Uh, but there are a lot of cooperativity um, metrics now in the medal criteria, even though they haven't been completely nailed down. And all I want to say is, the sooner that we make a a clear pitch as to why you should use Jogal and what Jogal will add to your iGEM experience mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. get out there early, the yeah. more teams will use it. That's all Absolutely. I'm going to say. Because right now I'm confused as to exactly how mm -hmm. to use it. So, so we, we had, uh, so we were part of this um, iGEM uh, opening weekend festival. Um, and so we, uh, we had a session to explain how we were seeing things. And so the, the, the few first examples is how do you, for example, create, as you said, collaboration between IGEM teams. Uh, if you want to look at what other IGEM team are doing, that's the, the best way of doing it. Probably. Like having IGEM teams on the platform, being able to see what are the needs, being able to answer those also. Um, and and so the the feedbacks from the from the IGMT that were present actually were quite well really good. You know, they were really interested in, in, in using that. The other part is being able to um, ask for collaboration collaboration also on with, with external people not iGEMers for human practices uh, activities and uh, and so so that that's I think is going to be very useful too in fact uh, right now we are building the the iGEM program page um, in terms of content but uh, in 10 days not this Saturday but the next one we ha will be having a session of two hours with iGEMers to really um, like, so that they can get, give us feedback about what they would dream having, you know, on Jogo in terms of features and activities or information, um, so that it could improve their whole experience of, of iGEM. So it's it's a it's a very experimental year for us too, uh, for iGEM too, as they have, don't have uh, a physical jamboree, um, and so you know, I think it's a it's a it's a preparative way uh, to to get into a, a new phase in 2021. Um, so. 
and and iGEM is very open to this. So it's very it's very it's very exciting. Uh, but you're absolutely right, Ellen. It's um, uh, we are build, but we need to build a, a very simple pitch about to make it. iGEM teams don't have much time to there. They're so focused on their projects. So it needs to be simple for them. Absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, the, so now we're going to hear from the project, from your project. So I'm very excited to, uh, to hear about, about, about you, about your updates. Uh, the first project we'll be hearing about is, uh, is Breezy. Uh, Adam, are you here? Yeah. Yeah, hi. <laughs> this is Adam. Yeah. So, uh, so we have a new control panel uh, to control Breezy parameters. Uh, <coughs> So there, there is some success. I, I didn't manage to, to record a video, but there is at least pictures on Joggle and on Slack. We keep working on this. Yeah, so I, I would keep it this short, I think. <laughs> yeah, and then the next project is Syringe Pump. I added this project uh, to, to the table, so maybe I can... Uh, sure, yeah. Maybe I can continue. Uh, so... It seems like the activity is decreasing on, on, uh, in, in this project on Slack. Uh, we uh, also managed to somehow miss the Friday call. So, but I, ha I hope we continue because we have the board, the electronic board ready now. And <coughs> uh, also, so we are working on a design of the panel, of, of the control panel. So, so maybe it's time to, to work on mechanics to integrate uh, uh, the electronics and mechanics together into one compact device. The next, uh, the, the next meeting is, uh, is this Friday, right? Uh, it, used to be, it used to be uh, every Friday on 9 p.m. Uh -huh. But the last the last time nobody was there and nobody, like I don't know so uh, so maybe I I wrote to mainly to Sin to Sina because Sina Sina was the most active member from from the mechanic part from the Poseidon project so yeah. Sina, I, Sina I, was uh, very busy with uh, an academic project that he had to finish uh, so he said he would come back so maybe that's the reason why. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe he's just busy. Yeah. All right. So, but, but the next, the next uh, meeting is this Friday, right? 9 p.m. So, if people wants to uh, to join. Yeah, I mean, I maybe maybe we don't we don't need uh, many people because the the core, <laughs> like the healthy core, <laughs> is enough to have like three four people uh, to to get it running. Because uh, yeah, we we need to to go on with the mechanics and. Uh, it's a pity I, I we missed uh, this grant round. <laughs> I, I just didn't didn't make it uh, to, to apply because we need to to get parts and prototypes of the electronics board. <coughs> so okay. So, yeah. um, well, we, we we can discuss that, but uh, yeah, sure. Project needs definitely. Um, um, all right. Thank you very much, uh, Adam. Um, the next project we want to hear about is uh, the basic respirator uh, by Hunter. Hi. Uh, so, quick update: I got all five faces printed for the or the, the different head forms. So I got all my friends. I set them up in the morning and they stare at me while I work. So it's super creepy, um, but they're very useful. So I was able to create five patterns for those uh, to get well-fitting masks. Um, as regarding testing, because one of the things I applied for funding for was the um, fit testing, but I'm actually having a problem getting fit testing supplies. I had ordered some nebulizers and um, those aren't coming in stock anytime soon. Um, so I canceled that order. So I, I need to find another uh, place for those. That's the only part that I still need. Um, but I'm partnering with a company now called In Silico Trials. They're from Italy. Um, they're going to do some airflow simulation with the mask on the face. Um, to simulate uh, different particle sizes and um, you know and the forces that govern them and, and how those are going to flow into the mask and then also of particular importance to me is ventilation because when someone breathes out there's um, with respirators specifically um, the ventilation is not filtered 
So the air is just coming out. And if, if a um, healthcare worker or first line responder is wearing the mask and then breathes on a patient or a citizen, um, I'm wondering where does that where does that air go? Does it go directly on their face? I'm hoping that it kind of comes and catches the clothes. Um, but in Silico has been great because they're doing this for free and they they just wanted to partner um, and uh, and help out and use their technology for this crisis. So I, I sent, put their website on there. Um, so hopefully maybe by next week or week after that, I'll have some really cool visualizations to to do. I did some particle programming years ago so it's it's but it was for more for art so it's it's exciting to be able to use this for for science so, and uh and uh, the last thing uh very quickly manufacturing so uh gerber technology who um runs all of the cad programs and the machines for uh fashion and textile manufacturers around the world um they have a ppe task force um so they offered to help um, they connected me with some people in their organization to offer to help me find a manufacturer um, so in the process of getting hopefully FDA approval or at least review, um, I'm going to be speaking with manufacturers to uh, to produce a lots and lots of units, but we'll see. So that's it. Awesome. Thank you very much, Hunter. Um, next project is the SARS-CoV-2 detective. Okay, so um, I'll try and do a bit better than I did last week. Um, I'm going to try again to share the screen, but basically for some background, this is a method for DNA amplification that we're using. And so there are little primers, a little bit more complicated than your average PCR, if you've heard of that. But um, it's really important how much um, different um, ratios of different primers and how much magnesium there is in the reaction for the enzyme to amplify the DNA correctly. And so we've been doing a lot of sort of optimization and I just wanted to give you a sort of simple overview and then show you the complexities and um, also mention a few other special things that we've been learning even using this hacked big beast. So I'm gonna try and share the screen. Uh, it's not, it says I can't share the screen too much. It says oh. there's a disabled thing. Really? Strange. But it's all right. I can just tell, uh, because I just put some pictures up on the Slack and there's a lot more data to come. Um, but I, the main thing I was going to sort of show to start was that the old school enzyme, which is open for um, making and using wherever you are, and also one of the projects that's up right now that should be reviewed by more people, um, is looking to purify these old school enzymes. Should I try again, Thomas? Or should I just yeah, it, it, seem, it yeah. seems you should be able to do it. It um, says disable the participant screen sharing. There's some overriding thing, but it's all right, because there are pictures. Um, Tomas, so I think if you go up to the right and go on to people instead of chat, and go down to her name, I think you can then go into the permissions for her and let her share her screen. Oh, you think it's yeah. for me? <laughs> Either that or you uh, might have to make her a, um, what are they called, an admin or something. Okay. You know what, I'm making you a host. You're the host now. Tell me if it's working. Let's see if it works. Okay, I say share screen and now it shares the screen. Okay, so uh, here is the software program. And so share. So does everyone see that now? I'm gonna make it. Awesome. Big. So, okay, so this shows just the overview with the old school enzyme. So you can see there's one set of three colorful lines that come up. And so with this is shows with cycles, how the fluorescence increases. So every time the DNA gets made, the double-stranded DNA, a little dye, um, starts fluorescing. It, it intercalates into the double-stranded helix and makes this fluorescent signal. So um, the three different lines here, one is the, with, so each row has a different level of magnesium here. So this is the row that um, is the highest level of magnesium, the eight millimolar magnesium, and a lower level of the positive control, to what we call 250, maybe that shows up the box there now. And then this next one up is with four times more of the positive control, a thousand copies, it, it says. Um, and so it comes up a bit further with a higher number, but the best one was with actually seven millimolar magnesium. And you'll see in a minute why that is. And then these three are with the 
lower level six millimolar magnesium or um, less of the uh, seven millimolar magnesium, the 250 rather than a thousand. And so what you can see now is that actually, if you have too much magnesium, sometimes the primers interact with themselves even though there isn't template there. And so these two lines here, you can see they come up much later in the cycling, but that's actually just water as a template. So when this old school enzyme has all these, there are six primers in there, um, the water comes up late when it has the highest level of magnesium for these tests. But at four millimolar magnesium, actually you get nothing. So basically that's, that's all in the noise. But um, with the more uh, up-to-date patented enzyme, you can see actually it's a little bit nicer. You get a higher level of amplification. These again are with the higher amounts of plasmid and the lower amounts of plasmids. And they're really coming up 12, cycle 12 for the lower amount of plasmid is only about 26, 27 minutes. And so that's really quite good for this um, procedure. But again, if you look at the waters and the whole thing, you can see some waters do come up even at six millimolar magnesium. So when you put these all together, <laughs> you can see a lot of details. And so I always really need to go through and label these things and make nice graphs. And you can see we're really trying to do open notebooks in the, the Google Drive. And um, you can look and see all the details of the experiments. And I really suggest everyone try and make an experimental page who's doing these sort of assays. And um, again, there's one more set of uh, primers. And that's the other primers that we know actually give a lot of trouble. And if I just click here, you'll see everything. And these primers actually, they're um, and the initial set that all of us started to use also from the NEB lamp group, and they just all on their own, they always interact. So you get double-stranded DNA that gives background fluorescence from the very beginning. That's about tenfold the background you get with this other set of primers. And so I really think um, we're making good steps towards optimizing, and I'm really looking forward to getting um, the free genes um, FedEx delivery, which should come on Monday, and that'll have more positive controls for us because it looks like there are a lot of other areas of the plasmid we could investigate that would really make a good corona detective for us. And um, I will go ahead and stop sharing the screen. And I'll just say also that um, sometimes people send you something, they put numbers on it, but actually they tell you it's not really quantitative, it's qualitative. So the, the plasmid we all bought, this end plasmid, where it said it was 200,000 copies per microliter. Actually, when I complained that actually it, there's much less there, they said, actually, it's only meant for qualitative methods, not quantitative. So people should learn the difference when you put a number on something. It means uh, it should be quantitative. But anyway, we're looking forward to having not just DNA controls, but RNA controls soon. And I'm sure you'll hear more about RNA extraction in the real samples because it's gonna be another challenge. Our corona detective is for basically environmental monitoring to check that you've done well in your cleaning of your, your office or your doorknobs or whatever um, when we're trying to come out of this crisis. And so, uh, we're hoping that um, Guy in Paris will be able to make the first tubes to set off to all of our different collaborators, also in Cameroon and Chile, um, in maybe in two or three weeks. Awesome. Exciting news, Rachel. Thank you so much. Um, the, the next project is going to be the Bioreactor project. Hi there, it's Adrian in here. So, uh, yeah, so we got some good progress there. Not sure if you can see, this is the first PCB, like a dedicated PCB, which is quite nicely done. Uh, we, uh, we got most of the components and uh, we populated about, uh, about one right now. We have to populate about three or four to send them to, the, uh, to several labs that uh, are part of this project. Um, another good development is that we managed to do the uh, long distance PCR for, um, for creating the, the uh, plasmids for the first three reagents. 
Uh, it's a fair, it was a fairly difficult one because it's about 10K and the content, some like the first three agents uh, have uh, two polymerases into them, which means that they have a very rich uh, GC content. So we tried several times and it failed and then we finally managed to get it by, uh, uh, by changing uh, lots of things. So, so that's another good development. Um, in the rest, uh, so we are still redesigning the, uh, uh, the, bio, the, uh, the rocker for the bioreactor. We have one uh, that's working right now, but uh, it's, it's 3D printed and it's a little bit uh, difficult to, um, it takes a long time to print it. It's not, it's not good for manufacturing. Um, uh, I was printing some peristaltic pump heads um, the problem is we ordered the peristaltic pumps, but uh, so far they didn't come from uh, from the uh, from the supplier. So uh, there is a possibility of using this uh, planetary system, in which you can use a normal motor. So we're going to try that while waiting for uh, um, for the uh, peristaltic pumps. Uh, we did uh, we. Added the software some parts for adding some calibration for the pH sensors uh, and we are working on an optional oxygen sensor solution now the oxygen sensor for reagents is kind of well it's a dissolved oxygen it's it's optional but uh, if we can uh, put one would be great uh, unfortunately they are very expensive so we're going to try to do a, like a DIY solution for that and that's about it awesome thank you Adrian um, the the next project is uh, Hackit 19. Parsi, are you here? Hello. Hi. Um, hello, this is Sophie. Just to give you a little, uh, I have a lot of sun, just to give you a little update uh, on our um, project. Uh, we have a meeting this week uh, with uh, the organization who was in charge of the um, uh, Greek hackathon. And uh, the project is to see with them uh, if the uh, product uh, corresponds to what they needed. Because we won uh, a Greek hackathon and uh, we, we have to deliver now the product. We still uh, we're still looking for a um, web designer to help us to uh, make our website uh, more reactive, and uh, we applied uh, to the Joggle uh, grant uh, to have a little help um, on the, the enhancement of our project. Uh, I don't know how much time I have, uh, but um, if a it's possible, minutes. yeah, I can I can show you the um, uh, the the website if you want quickly. Yeah. Uh, if I can share screen, ah, I cannot share the screen. It's very strange. Okay, let me actually. Uh, yes, you can. I can you, now. Let me see. So you are you are the host now. Can you actually try sharing? Hello. Yes, I can. This is it. You can see my screen? Yes. So this is uh, our website, which is called uh, Akit19. Uh, the idea is uh, to um, help people to make uh, self-diagnosis. So it's not a um, um, rough health diagnosis, but it's to have the first uh, signals, uh, first symptoms of, uh, of the disease. And I think uh, even if uh, uh, most uh, countries are deconfined now, it will be very helpful in the following days and weeks uh, to have this kind of tools. It's not a tracking tool. We really want people to be uh, free to give their information or not. And uh, really the idea is that this tool is for the users uh, who will, uh, will use this. So I will not uh, show you all the, the self-check, but we let the possibility to the person to give its identity or not. The idea behind that is to have a follow-up 
for the users of their health. Uh, and uh, we have the possibility, alors, this is based on Greek, uh, Greek data because we worked on, uh, specifically on uh, Greece. Uh, but uh, the idea is to, with the information uh, of the uh, assessment, is to see where we have people who may have uh, symptoms uh, looking like uh, coronavirus symptoms or areas where people are more uh, without these symptoms. Uh, so this is the health map. We have also the cues, which is really the, for the, it's very simple uh, because the team is an international team and we wanted to have this tool operational uh, as long as Google is, um, uh, can be operated in a country because uh, it's a uh, Google information. Uh, and uh, the idea behind it is to know if there are queues in the shops or not. So it's the same thing. We don't track people. We don't use cameras. We don't use information. We want, if one person is in one shop, I, we, want, we would like him to tell to other people, to, to his hood, uh, if there are queue or not in this shop, okay? And uh, but my hood part is not developed, uh, it's under construction, but really it's a very simple website uh, to help people to know uh, whether uh, their hood is, um, let's say, uh, healthy or not, and uh, to know if uh, they will uh, waste time going to the shops or not. And the my hood part is uh, to allow people to keep in touch, to keep in contact, uh, even if uh, they cannot see uh, each other very, uh, very regularly. That's awesome. it. Thank you so much, Sophie. Um, so I'm going to claim uh, the host. So um, the next project is uh, going to be the NEB LAMP project. Um, who would like to speak for the project? Well, Sarah's here too. Um, I just uh, wanted to share something that I thought was fairly exciting, which is um, my company uh, uses a, a law firm to do our intellectual property work. And um, this particular guy was recommended by an old friend of mine who used to be like chief patent counsel at Pfizer. I mean, he's a really, really good patent lawyer. And, um, and so this guy, Ken, um, saw the posts about the open source project and he apparently is sort of interested in the idea of open source. And um, he spontaneously offered to, uh, you know, he sort of said, if there's anything I can do. And I said, well, you know, we have all these things that might end up as open source tests, but, you know, we're not, sometimes we're not 100% sure, like this thing with New England Biolabs. Uh, we've been going back and forth with them and also their IP guy. And, uh, you know, just to make sure that we don't get a, an unexpected roadblock in the project, um, I think what this guy is saying is he's going to give us basically free intellectual property advice. Uh, and and this this guy who we ended up hiring uh, it, it, at my company, it, he's really really top flight. I mean, he he's like a huge asset if he wants to do pro bono work for this project. And there's, there is a potential, you know, if we can get him interested in this, there's a potential of maybe that spreading to other projects, you know? So uh, uh, that, that to me is, is really great because that's one area that I was a little concerned about with some of these things. Um, and he, he is a very high priced attorney. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, for all the projects. I, I just want to make sure that I got him correctly, that he's doing this pro bono and everything else, but that's what it seems like. Um, he's, he's curious about this whole movement and, and has lectured on it before. So, um, and, and then in terms of the other stuff, I guess, uh, 
uh, Rachel, I don't know if Rachel has the document open, but I just talked about how we're focusing on RNA extraction uh, protocols and, um, and still looking for clinical partners. Rachel, you want to take over with that? Or not Rachel, I'm sorry, Sarah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I'm not offended if you call me Rachel. It's okay. I don't know why I keep mixing up your names for some weird reason, but only on these calls. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, so we're pretty happy with how things are going. Um, we've sorted, we think we could do some tests with this uh, company's inactivation buffer, but we have some sample kits. Uh, I don't know if, I can, if you can see it, but anyway, um, if you see me, maybe you see these, but um, can, can see it, yeah. I can't share the screen. So this is the company that um, they supply 23andMe with these um, kits that go out for the home collection of saliva or of a buccal smear um, in the side of the cheek. And they have already been approved for emergency use authorization. Um, one of them has, and the other one has the same liquid, so probably it's okay. Um, and so we're just trying to do, we're trying different fronts. And so this would be the quickest way to be able to start um, having people do home test kits and then send them in. Um, and so we're, we're kind of focusing on what's the thing we can do right away which would be using their collection kits. And um, we have optimized the lamp. And I, again, I don't know what you can, can see here, but there's a yellow and there's a pink. I don't know, it's pretty hard, I think, to see it. Hey, we can but see. The, the NEB lamp test, uh, we have optimized it and we're really very happy with it. Um, we can get positive detection, depending on our labs, between 10 and 50 copies of the virus. Um, and we, we have uh, no false negatives for up to an hour, and we can see positives at 20 minutes. And so this test is generally read at 30 minutes. So we're really pretty happy about this stability and that the negative stays negative so long. Um, so you're gonna, the thing like um, Ellen said, I'm thinking of a different name to call you, Ellen. <laughs> no, the, thing that, the thing that Ellen said, was um, you know what we're working on. So we have the the first part with the kits. That's pretty settled as long as it doesn't interfere with the the pH test. Um, and then we have the last part, which is the NEB test optimized. And so we need the in between part, which we really feel like we need to have some way to concentrate the virus so we don't miss people with low titer. And so that's what we're working on right now. We're trying some different methods. Um, there's a Harvard preprint that we're trying some silica um, RNA extraction kind of work and then um, Ellen's doing it now <laughs> as we speak. Um, we did some tests with it yesterday and we'll continue and then there is a paper that reports that they, not for this but for other things, that they have used um, Wattman filter paper kind of a dipstick thing and um, the filter paper as cellulose which will bind nucleic acid and so um, we're, we're trying some really quick hopefully easy ways to concentrate that RNA virus. Yep. I don't know anything else? <laughs> that, that sounds awesome. One of the awesome things about that paper is they literally did it with paper towels. The wow. cellulose. I mean, they literally took a piece of paper towel and ex extracted DNA, not RNA, but um, we'll see. And RNA, plant RNA. <laughs> plant virus RNA. So yeah, so we are, we're, <laughs> we're, we're I feel like we're in the home stretch. That's fantastic. Very exciting. Um, thank you so much, uh, Sarah, Ellen, for the updates. Um, I think that was uh, the last project uh, update. So we have um, an update, however, from uh, the project Mental Health from uh, Sophie. Sophie, would, like to, uh, would you like to speak? Hi, how are you guys? Hi. Um, so we've had a 
small um, hiccup last week. We were supposed to start last week, but we're going to get started this week. So on Friday at 1 p.m. Chicago time, which is 8 p.m. Paris time, um, we are going to be presenting the Finding Your Inner Peace webinar. So this is 40 minutes. And it's a 20 minute presentation in which George and I will, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention George Ellerick is, is my partner in this and he can't be on the call today. Um, but George and I will be presenting a 20 minute um, webinar about how to get recentered and finding your inner peace. And then I will talk you guys through a 20 minute guided meditation. We wanna keep this going every week, so there's going to be different topics, and we're also open to suggestions, whatever you guys would be interested in um, hearing more about, you know, that would be amazing to get some input. But a couple of topics we're thinking about is um, making new habits and how to make those stick, um, seizing opportunities, how to just make one positive change in your life and seeing how that's a domino effect, and how that affects everything. Um, redirecting your fear and recognizing your fear and how to power through that. Um, and how to use fear effectively as a tool because this pandemic stopped us a lot. And you know, it just kind of stopped us dead in our tracks and it left a lot of fear. Now it's subsiding a bit, but there's a lot to get used to, right? Our new realities are all very different and this is not just for a while. Um, there's companies that are going into working from home permanently. And we all saw this coming, but you know, how are we going to stay in optimal health when a lot of us are going to be working from home now? So um, those are topics that we would all like to explore and hopefully I'll have everybody join us. So thank you for the time and see you Friday. Awesome, thank you so much, Sophie. Um, I think that concludes uh, this session, this global community call. Um, would you like, like, would anyone would like to to, to say something? Um, no, uh, we have a few more minutes uh, of free time, of free discussion, if you'd like so. Um, I just wanted to um, yes. apologize if anyone saw that article that was in the New Yorker. I emphasized over and over that this was a community effort and somehow they decided I was the leader and that's how it got written up. And I did not get a chance to see the article before it was published. They had a fact check checker contact me, but he didn't tell me anything about that particular part of the text. So um, it's always uh, hard when you're dealing with the press to get them to print things the way that you want them printed because they have their own story that they want to tell. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I got in trouble <laughs> from several fronts. First, you know, for looking like I was trying to grab all the glory on the project. And second, I got my company got mad at me because it didn't mention the think, company's name. So <laughs> thanks, thanks to your contribution, also Drogo uh, and the community is, is part of the story too in the article, which is great. Is the article posted on Slack? I didn't I didn't hear about this. Uh, I don't think so yet. I've, I haven't seen it. Um, I'd like to read it. I'll I'll look for it. Rachel awesome. posted it in one of our threads. But yeah, I posted okay. it somewhere in the nuclear gas. Oh, really? um, Have you been able one. to get back in touch with them to ask for a correction? Because I see already one's been made on the article. It's, it's yeah, I mean, it, it would have to be something big for them, like something really like a wrong affiliation or just a nuance like you know the fact that you're not leading it that you're part of it or they wouldn't change my company immediately made me email them and they refused to put my company name in so <laughs> it's cool ellen don't That's worry <laughs> yeah absolutely it's, it's, it's all cool um <laughs> 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 all right um we'll be sharing the the articles maybe um uh, Rachel, you could share it in a more um, general channel for everyone to see. 
um, on the Slack. Um, well, I think I think this concludes the the call. Uh, so before we say um, goodbye to everyone, uh, we have our traditional um, screen capture moments. So I'll be asking everyone to activate their uh, video stream so uh, that I can see everyone. And uh, we'll be waiting and for a And if anyone seconds. wants to join for a Hackwarium open evening, come along. <laughs> There's another Zoom I just posted. All right. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> I think we're almost there. Pauline, uh, do you want to activate your or look? All right, I think I think it's pretty good. So um, you can say hi to everyone. <laughs> say hi to the internet. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, thank you so much for this session. I hope that uh, you're all doing well and um, we'll be seeing you all on uh, Jogo, the Slack and uh, also next week, next Wednesday. Have a, a great day, a great evening or a great morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.